Hello, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and I'm returning once again with a presentation regarding the mushrooms found in Saskatchewan and the ways in which we go about identifying and picking those mushrooms. So, uh, you may have noticed, if you've been following these presentations in chronological order, uh, that uh, at the beginning we were dealing more with mushrooms that were geared towards or, or labeled uh, for beginner mushroom pickers and as time went on it went to intermediate and more and more it's been going towards advanced. Uh, now we've reached a point uh, after we're having reviewed the lethally toxic mushrooms where we're going to be looking at mushrooms primarily for advanced mushroom pickers. Now just to go over the criteria that I use to make that uh, decision uh, just a little bit here for you. Um, Beginner mushrooms are mushrooms that I would uh, advise for people who are kind of getting into the hobby. And they are mushrooms that don't have gills because um, there's so many more agaric gilled mushrooms out there than non gilled mushrooms when we're picking mushrooms. Uh, and they are mushrooms that don't have any close toxic lookalikes. Uh, a, a perfect example would be the bolletes and the slippery jacks because these are poured mushrooms that grow on the ground and uh, there are no toxic species or uh, dangerously toxic species found in Saskatchewan. Uh, there are toxic species outside of Saskatchewan but not anywhere in Saskatchewan would you make that mistake. So they're fairly safe for people who are just getting into the hobby. Intermediate mushrooms are mushrooms that are um, Guild mushrooms, usually. Uh, there are some that I labeled as intermediate that are non guild mushrooms like morels, but uh, they are guild mushrooms that uh, may have toxic lookalikes, but they're not that close. Like it's fairly easy if you, uh, if you are looking for the criteria properly to identify between them. And uh, the lookalikes are not. A dangerously toxic. They may be moderately toxic, but they're not going to be fatally toxic. And uh, then finally, there's the advanced mushrooms. Uh, these can be guild or non guild mushrooms, uh, but they have lookalikes that are potentially lethal. And today, we're kind of entering into that territory here, and we will be doing that increasingly more so with the upcoming presentations. So today we're looking at the funnel mushrooms of Saskatchewan and the two uh, lookalikes that are going to be popping up over and over again are Clitocybe dilbata and Clitocybe phyllophilus. And those are mushrooms that we looked at in the presentation on dangerous doppelgangers of Saskatchewan. So the genera that we will be looking at in this presentation are Clitocybe and Infundibilocybe. Uh, I would also note here as well that the mushrooms here are very closely related to the mushrooms found in a prior presentation, and that was the Bluets of Saskatchewan. However, the mushrooms here uh, have um, been separated from that presentation on the basis of their common name as well as uh, their potential to be identified with toxic species. So these are so closely related to the Lepista and Paralepista mushrooms found in that other presentation that there is actually some uh, confusion and debate over certain species as to where they belong, such as the wood bluet, which some people say is Clitocybe, others say is Lepista. And it's not really known, both are presently accepted. What is a funnel mushroom? Well, funnel mushrooms, as we've just mentioned, are mushrooms that belong to one of the following genera, Clitocybe or Infundibilocybe. They usually have a funnel-caped uh, cap with a very deep depression in the middle and they contain both edible and lethally toxic mushrooms. So the first species we're going to look at is the aniseed funnel mushroom, and this is uh, Clitocybe odura. So the cap is bluish green to blue in color, 
and it fades with age uh, towards this uh, kind of off-white, sometimes very pale white even, and it's lighter towards the margin, as you can see there. It's very dark in the middle. Uh, the cap is convex, flattening out and becoming depressed or funnel-shaped. So that depression can actually be quite deep. The surface, if you run your finger across that surface, it'll be smooth or velvety. The older ones will be more smooth, especially if there's been something to wear that velvety uh, feel down, like something like a, a rain or something like that. Uh, the margins are downrolled when young. Uh, and as they become more uplifted, uh, they will go from smooth, which is what you're seeing here, to, to more wavy, especially if it's taking on that funnel shape. And then these caps grow up to about four inches in diameter. So a, a nice sized mushroom for the table for sure, if you find a couple of them. Uh, so here's a size reference for you, so you know what to look for. On the left there as well, you can see that wavy margin. The gills are cream to pink in color. They are decurrent. They are close together. There are short gills present. They're not frequent though. There's only about one or two between those, those gills. And this mushroom produces a pink cream spore print. The stipe is off-white in color. It is velvety to the touch. It is cylindrical to bulbous where it has kind of like a, a swell at the at the bottom. Uh, it forms a central attachment to the cap and it grows up to about three inches high to half an inch thick. Uh, these mushrooms are saprobic. They are found in hardwood leaf litter. That's why you're seeing all that mycelium at the base there. Um, this, this mushroom uh, may not even be touching the ground, it may actually have the mycelium uh, kind of forming a mat under uh, decaying leaf litter and kind of clumping all that leaf litter together. Uh, these mushrooms are terrestrial, I would still call them terrestrial, and they are scattered to gregarious and they are found summer through fall. Their edibility is good, uh, I would maybe even say choice. Uh, they have a very strong smell of anise or black licorice and oftentimes you can smell this mushroom before you even see it. Uh, it, it the smell is that strong and um, they are for advanced mushroom pickers and I'll tell you why. So on the left you have a washed out Clitocybo dura that's probably been exposed either to sun or rain and it has lost the blue coloration and it looks very close to Clitocybdeal bata on the right. And Clitocybdeal bata is the sweating mushroom or the sweater. Um, it contains large quantities of the toxin muscarin. And I mean, the problem too is that when, when Clitocybe odura gets older, the smell begins to fade away. So unless you put these two mushrooms under the microscope, you wouldn't really have any conclusive way to tell the difference between them. So if you're finding younger Clitocybodura that still have the fragrance of aniseed and have the blue coloration, you'll, you're good. Otherwise, leave them alone. And just again, to ram it home, here's an even more toxic species called the uh, frosted funnel mushroom on the right-hand side, Clitocybe phyllophylla. Uh, very hard to tell the difference between the two when it's an older washed out uh, aniseed mushroom. The next species we're going to look at is the common funnel mushroom. This is Infundibilocybe gibba. So this used to actually be in Clitocybe. It was uh, separated recently. Uh, this one is very common in Saskatchewan as well. I've picked them quite often. The cap is beige to brown. It is flat, becoming funnel-shaped by maturity. Uh, the thin-fleshed and leathery. Now, most people would be like, well, that sounds terrible. Uh, one of the nice things about a thin-fleshed mushroom like that uh, is that it very rarely will have insects in it. And they do tend to pick up sauce very well. So if you have it in like a, a pasta sauce, it's going to have that uh, sauce all over it anyways and it's it's going to pick it up very well because it's 
uh, its texture is more malleable. And uh, the margin is smooth or wavy, depending upon how uh, deep that funnel goes. And then it, these grow up to about three inches in diameter. Here's the size reference for you. You can see some of them in the middle there are becoming quite funnel-like. The gills are off-white to cream. They are decurrent running down the stipe. Uh, they are crowded. You can see that there. Short gills are frequent. There's quite a number of them between each set of full gills. And then these produce a white spore print. The stipe is off-white to beige to tan. It's cylindrical, has a central attachment to the, to the cap. And it's up to about one to two inches high. Not much to say about them. These are saprobic mushrooms. They are terrestrial. They are scattered to gregarious. Uh, I find them in woodlands. I find them in grasslands. Um, I, I find them very often in the grassy margins, uh, along paths in woodlands and along path like grassy areas in the woodlands themselves. And then these are found summer through fall. They're good. Uh, they have a mild taste. Like I said, they rarely have insects and they're great for sauces. Uh, these are for advanced mushroom pickers. Because Clitocide dilbata again, can actually take on that sort of light tan brownish color. Uh, so you really do have to be careful. Here is the robust funnel. This is Clitocybe robusta. So the cap is off-white, sometimes developing tan or gray streaks or spots. You can see a few brown spots there, kind of some streaks on the left. Uh, it is convex in shape, flattening with age may develop a very shallow central depression, but often it doesn't develop a central depression at all. Uh, the profile can be either round or eccentric. It has a smooth cuticle if you run your finger along the top, uh, but it's very thick fleshed for a funnel mushroom. Most of these mushrooms are, are fairly thin fleshed. This one's gonna be a lot more robust as the name implies. Um, the margin is down rolled later on becoming wavy as it uh, as it turns upwards. But uh, again, it doesn't often have a deep funnel. And then these grow up to seven inches in diameter. So they're a very large funnel mushroom. And here's a, here's a size reference for you. So you can see there the funnels have, the, the margins have turned upwards a little bit, but it's formed more of a rim uh, as opposed to like a funnel. And oftentimes they won't turn up at all. So the gills are white to off-white. They are adnate to slightly decurrent, crowded together. Uh, short gills are present, though not frequent. And this is key here because this is one of the ways in which you can determine that you have this mushroom is that it has a pale yellow spore print. The stipe is cream in color. It is cylindrical to clavate. You can see that kind of clavate, especially on the left-hand side there and more cylindrical on the right-hand side. Uh, it's smooth to the touch and then up to about four inches high and an inch thick. So again, very robust for the in comparison to some of the other funnel mushrooms we've seen. And here you can certainly see that uh, kind of eccentric shape, especially the one in the bottom right-hand corner there. Uh, these are saprobic mushrooms. They grow in both conifer, duff, and leaf litter. So fairly widespread throughout the province. Pretty much any sort of wooded environment, these could be present as long as it's kind of, you know, getting to be older growth especially, and there's a lot of decaying matter on the, on the forest floor. Uh, these are also preferential to disturbed ground. And one place I seem to find these quite often is uh, kind of sticking out of like deadfalls and stuff like that or anywhere where a larger tree has been turned over and then kind of the chaos if you lift up some of those branches you'll often find these underneath um, 
they are gregarious, as you can see from this photo. Um, they often cluster together and they are found summer through fall. So they're, they're a good edible. Um, one thing that is uh, needed for determining that you have the right mushroom, uh, but is also kind of off-putting towards wanting to eat it, is that they smell awful. They smell sickly sweet and they have this kind of like garbage-like odor, like if you're smelling an old garbage can. Uh, these are for advanced mushroom pickers because you're going to need several points of reference here that are kind of subjective. One is the smell, uh, one is the uh, spore print, because when you say pale yellow, if you're not doing it on like a piece of glass and then have a very good background, often it'll just look white. Or maybe you'll think, oh, that could be pale yellow, and it's not. Um, because, you know, if, if you're inside, again, the lighting can affect it a little bit, may give it maybe a sepia tone uh, as well. The size, like it has to be a larger mushroom. Don't try to pick these if they're smaller because you won't know. And uh, again, that not having that deep funnel. The uh, lookalikes are, are, again, there's Cletocybdial bata on the right, which can at times become fairly large, uh, but usually it's a bit smaller and uh, it doesn't smell as strongly as Clitocybe robusta does. Uh, just to give it a bit more reference, um, I have found Clitocybe robusta, but I would never pick and eat this mushroom if I was serving it to other people. Because, again, there's just always the opportunity for, uh, for errors, and uh, I, I wouldn't want to put other people at risk. And then here's Clitocybe phyllophylla. I will say Clitocybe phyllophylla is a fairly small mushroom. Uh, so generally speaking, it should be pretty easy to tell the difference between the two unless you're picking tiny little pins of Clitocybe robusta. But even then, the pins wouldn't be flattened like you're seeing with the Clitocybe phyllophylla, right? I mean, one's a seven inch mushroom, one's a two to three inch mushroom. So that one should be fairly easy to differentiate. The next mushroom we're going to look at is the fragrant funnel. This is Clitocybe fragrance. So this one I will put a bit of an additional warning on because this mushroom, uh, some sources say is mildly toxic in and of itself. Others say it's just fine. Likely what people are seeing here is either uh, a sensitivity uh, that some people may have to this mushroom or maybe a small amount of the toxin muscarin as opposed to the the lethal amounts that we're seeing in the other mushrooms. I do pick this mushroom and I've, I've never had a problem with it and uh, I quite like it. So the cap is white to off-white to grayish brown or even I would say uh, kind of an ivory brown. Uh, it is convex, flattening out with age and developing a central depression over time. Sometimes that central depression can get quite deep. Uh, they are smooth to the touch. Uh, they are very thin fleshed and sometimes so much so that it becomes translucent and uh, it striates the margin as a result. And that's what you're seeing there. And that's probably uh, what you're seeing is, is uh, the top of the gill plates because it is so thin fleshed. Uh, this is a hygrophonous species. If you recall, a hygrophonous species is a species that uh, in dry weather takes on a completely different coloration than in uh, wetter weather. So as the weather transitions from one to the other, you'll often see mushrooms taking on a two-toned appearance as they begin to dry out, or if they're going in the reverse direction, uh, as it begins to uh, become more, uh, the humidity goes up, so to say. Uh, the margin is downturned when young, and again, it's kind of striated because of the gill plates, and it becomes upturned and wavy or even scalloped later on. So these mushrooms are fairly small. They only grow up to about two inches in diameter, 
AB3 at their largest. Here's the size reference for you. There's a little pencil there. This is also a very common mushroom in Saskatchewan. And here you can see them upturned and they've got a dis very distinct color change from what we've seen up till now as well. See how funnel shaped they are. And here uh, I've got kind of some examples of that two-tone kind of look. The gills are cream to pinkish cream, turning brown with age. They are adnate to slightly decurrent. Uh, what we're seeing here is more of an adnate, and that's just where the gills reach across and touch the stipe. Uh, they are close together, those gills, and um, they can even verge on crowded. Uh, it's harder to tell sometimes with smaller mushrooms like this. Uh, it's more subjective. So those short gills are frequent. You can see three to four between each gill, and then it produces cream spores. The stipe is cream to light brown. It is cylindrical, so of equal width throughout. It has a central attachment to the cap, and then it's kind of very fibrous and stock like you can see there. And then these grow up to about three inches tall. So a very long stipe. See how they're kind of jutting up there. Uh, these are saprobic mushrooms. They grow in woodland areas that have decaying deciduous leaf litter. So like oak, elm, birch, cottonwoods, that kind of thing. Uh, they are scattered around and they occur summer through fall. They're a good edible, I quite like them. Again, this is very similar to the, uh, the uh, first mushroom we looked at in that they smell strongly of anise seed or black licorice. But these are, again, for advanced mushroom pickers. So here you can see Cletocybe phyllophylla on the right hand side, Cletocybe fragrance on the left. How can you tell the difference between the two? The smell. That's what you're going to have to rely on. So if you're not comfortable with that, um, or you think that your own subjectivity may lead you down the wrong path, uh, avoid this one. Um, again, I would say if you're picking this mushroom, you're going to have to smell each and every one because these two mushrooms are the same size, they look the same, and they grow in the same environment. So if you see like 10 mushrooms, you pick one, you smell it, and it's uh, cliticide fragrance, which you want, and then you just pick the rest and you don't smell them. You could be picking a toxic mushroom as alongside. So be aware of that. And uh, here's a second look alike. Uh, this one's not as likely to occur. That's cliticide fragrance on the left, which is what you want. Cliticide deal bata on the right. I picked some of the more funnel shaped ones that have uh, similar coloring. But Clitocybe deal bata, generally speaking, uh, is, is, is a larger mushroom than the, these two inch little, little dainty mushrooms. As you can see, they're more robust there and they're usually about three to four inches at least. But again, in certain circumstances, if they're like still younger or for some reason they've been stunted due to their envir environmental factors, then you could be picking the wrong mushroom. Again, you're going to be reliant upon the smell. And that's everything for the funnel mushrooms of Saskatchewan. So if you're going to get into this, it's on you. Um, they, they, you're, the risk is going up exponentially with, with uh, mushrooms like this to pick them. I would also mention that there are numerous, numerous other species in Saskatchewan that are white and look just like one of these two toxic species and you just don't know right there's there's no way to tell unless you're gonna whip out the microscope for every mushroom you pick uh, before you put them on the table if that's what you like to do uh, you can probably find some information on that uh, it's there's not a whole lot of information online which is why I didn't provide any spore prints just because they're not available uh, I would have to do them myself and it's the you know not the time of year yet for that and uh, to be honest I tend to avoid this uh, this group of mushrooms for the most part so um, yeah this is the mushroom wizard keep yourself safe and uh, 
Yeah, have a good night. Thank you.